Hey, this is Jared Cochran with Family Church. Welcome to our podcast. I'm excited that you're here. I hope that God moves through this message to reach you so he can move through your life. Be sure to share and subscribe so that we can reach the world with God's word. Enjoy the message. Welcome to the family Welcome back to another windy Wednesday because it got really crazy outside all of a sudden. That was dumb. What? <laughs> you said that was dumb? Yeah. Start it over. We'll be right back. <laughs> no, welcome back to another... Whatever, I'm not doing it again. <laughs> uh, I'm here with my beautiful wife, as you can see by the name that says Kelsey Cochran. Uh, we're here to discuss episode eight. I just read Julie's thing. Satsuma! <laughs> That's, how <I> <laughs> That's how she said it. Okay. Um, Sorry. <laughs> now I'm thrown off. Oh, the family room. Yeah, I lost my train of thought completely. Um, yes, so this is <laughs> the family room. We're going to start over. We're, we'll we're way out of it second. today. It's been an interesting day. Um, we're here to discuss Sunday's sermon uh, from Contend series, uh, episode eight. I know you love that. Week eight, episode eight. Um, through, uh, the, we've been going through the book of Jude. If you haven't been with us or if you have, you know that this was verses um, 22 and 23. Very close to the end here. But uh, I'm excited. Um, do, are you doing the announcements? Sure. What the heck was that? Um, Something just exploded I don't outside. I have them in front of me. <laughs> right here. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> this... Friday is the movie night, and that'll be at 6. We did move it from 5.30 to 6 because um, work of work. <laughs> and uh, this, <laughs> this, weekend, this weekend is the ugly sweater day. Also, kids can wear their pajamas, and um, they're also going to be doing their little song. So if you have kids and they're in it up to fifth grade, we really don't want your ninth grader up there, so... Up to fifth yeah, that grade. won't fit in. <laughs> um, and they'll be singing their song they've been practicing, I think, since October. And then that, that night will be the Fire Youth Christmas movie. I think they're watching Home Alone. I'm pretty sure so. Dual said he's watching yeah, I think Home, it's Alone. Home Alone. And then Christmas Eve services will be on Tuesday, 9 and 11 a.m. Please don't show up at 9 p.m. And the cook-off will be on the 29th. And... I don't know if you want me to go over this. I kind of highlighted some stuff for next year. Go ahead. Let's do it. Okay. We're going to do it. Quick. So, okay. 30 seconds. Okay. So. Next. All right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go ahead. So, I'm not going to read everything. We basically spent, I think, what, three three or four hours on Tuesday morning. Yeah, we Dual completely even came in. Yeah. next year, which was cool. It was nice. Yeah. So, we went over basically everything because we really want to come in with 2025 um, with a bang. Like, I think we have a lot of things we really want to do. <sighs> I'm going, <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have a lot of things we want to do. Um, Brooke is working on the kids department. She's going to get a lot of, uh, organization going for each grade in those rooms. So she's going to be working hard on that so that it's a lot easier on the teachers. Um, she's finding out a lot of new ways to reach out to the new families coming in. Um, and a couple other things I'm not going to tell you guys because it's a secret. And we're also looking to hopefully, I don't want to let anyone down if we can't make this happen, but if someone knows somebody, we want to get one of those bubble trucks for the kids uh, for the anniversary party in the spring. I didn't um, know that was a thing. Yeah. It's supposedly, kids love it. Um, and then we're also working on every couple months, so quarterly, the kids are going to come up during worship and they're going to sing songs that they already know in class. They're not going to have to learn anything new, but it's the ones that they've been singing in class. So I think that's going to be really cute. Um, and hopefully if that goes well, we can move it up to more than just quarterly. We also, I hesitated to bring this up, but I kind of want to gauge the interest on it. Um, I haven't stopped really pushing for the school 
to start. Um, I think we were, like I talked to your dad, I think we were going about it a different way mm-hmm. or the wrong way. Not the wrong way, but I think that maybe... Right now we have, it's a different... It wasn't, it wasn't, it may not be what is... The right know, time. Never mind. So Brooke and I had two different ideas. We really wanted to start a homeschool co-op on Fridays from 9 to 11, and it would basically be just a curriculum, like a normal co-op where you're teaching something like history or science, and it'd be all grades together. And then we would have um, a arts and craft or music class for the rest of the time. And then you can eat lunch, and then if you want to, everybody can ride up to the um, gymnastics, World Golf Village Gymnastics, that... um, Candy's Candy and Candy's daughter, Candy, who works on production here, um, that she owns, and they have open gym for just any kids to join from 12 to 1. So it would kind of just be a really fun homeschool day. The second idea, I'm Brooke's more excited about the homeschool idea. I'm a little more excited about this one. Um, I don't know if anyone's heard of micro schools, but it's basically. To not drag this out, explaining wise, it would it would basically be the Legacy Christian Academy, but it wouldn't be a private school type of platform. It would be like how I'm teaching Riley for homeschool. We use a Becca, and the teacher is all online, and the teacher um, teaches Riley, and I'm there just to help her. And she has worksheets, and she has. Um, all the whole packet, everything gets sent to her. Yeah, she's got a Bible class, but you do the Bible study with her. Um, and it's really hands off from me because I was worried I wasn't going to be able to teach her everything that she needs to know. So she has the online instructor. So there was a really cool school, not a Becca, but there was a different one. Um, I had talked to you guys about it in the fall that they, it's K through 12 and it's all online. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty intense school too. Um, it's a Christian school, all online. Each grade has their own online instructor. So my my thought process was, you know, parents that want to have their kids in a Christian environment with people that they trust and people that they know will not, you know, have their kid going in a litter box during the day. <laughs> But also the parents that maybe are intimidated by homeschool, don't really want to take that on, also still want their kids hanging out with other kids all day long, every day, um, we would kind of be that center point. So we would use the facility here and then eventually the new property, and it would be K through 12. You know, once you get big enough, obviously, obviously you'd separate rooms, but everybody would have their own workstation with their own computer, own headset, um, taking breaks just like a normal school. We'd have playground recess, um, and we'd be able to, you know, hire maybe retired teachers or teachers that kind of just want to work part time because we couldn't pay full teacher pay because they would just literally just be like a teacher's assistant. They would be there if a kid didn't quite understand what the teacher was trying to say, and it would just be assisting. So, um, I think that would be, and it'd be a Monday through Friday type of thing. So it'd be like a homeschool, hybrid homeschool. Um, you know, uh, I'm not going to go into that because that's a little bit <laughs> deal. Anyway, um, so our youth, we're doing a couple things with organizing their stuff. Um, I talked to your dad about trying to look into grants to fund for a brand new full court basketball court behind the food pantry for the youth group. So I guess there's a couple nine square, whatever Duel said, is like this big nine, thing now. Was it nine square? I don't know. There's nine something, something with nine. Something's with nine. So, and then Duel wants to build a custom ping pong table that folds up. Um, but I'm really looking into getting this full court basketball court out there. For them. Anyway, we're looking at summer camps for 2026. 2025 is all completely booked up. So we're looking for 2026 for the kids because apparently it books up literally seven years in advance. I don't know. Um, and the softball field is leveled out. We just need to get Papa, Papa, whatever Brooke's grandfather's <laughs> name is, um, to get. Uh, the, he, he graciously offered to donate some of the supplies, like the. Um, uh, which we call it the plates, the bases, the bases, whatever. 
and the back net and stuff like that. Um, yeah. And he <clears> said he'll set it all up for us. He'll get it going for us. So hopefully that should be shut up in, shut up in the spring. And um, we talked to Joel about it too. Our goal would be eventually to have a youth-only softball team as well and also to have a full-court basketball um, place at the new property too where they can have a basketball team. I guess that's huge. And um, Brooke was telling me at Anastasia, she just signed up Arabella and it's... Oh, is that where she's going? Yeah. It's only it's going. only from like January to March and it was like $200 per kid to sign up for their basketball thing. So that's how they got the new building. <laughs> um, hey, Landon. So, yeah. So we're looking at finishing this softball field. We got to get with Papa. Sorry if I said Peepaw, Papa, whatever. There's so many Papas and Poppies. Um, the family care group's almost finished. We've got some training hopefully coming up for the worship team. Um, mm -hmm. Some new, did he say yes? Mm -hmm. He said yes? Mm -hmm. I asked phone okay. number two. So, cool. So him. we've got training coming up for the worship team. I'm super excited about that. Um, we need a bass player. Jared won't let me learn the bass because he said I'm doing too much right now. But there was a really cute green guitar that was on sale for $119. <laughs> Bro. It's only four no, strings. No. I can do it. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you want to be on Jared's side and you can play the bass, then get up here. If you want to be on my side, then don't get There's up here. There's new musicians, period. And I'll play the bass. Um, last but not least, I'm really sorry, is we be looking for a weekly email. I'll be sending out a weekly email based off of your sermon. Um, it'll just be, uh, which everybody I think already got it mm -hmm. on Tuesday, and I got a lot of really nasty emails back, and I spent the afternoon crying. <laughs> um, people are mean. And uh, also the new fam group that I posted on Facebook. So uh, I'm a leader of one, which is terrifying, and Brooke surprisingly volunteered to be a leader of another one. Neither one of us are doing Zoom, so if you want a Zoom one, you need to wait for a Zoom one to open I up. I might do one. I might do a Zoom one. Why not? Okay. And then last but not least, we're looking at, um, I'm working with Mark Lebrecht for a mentor group, a men's mentor group and a women's mentor group here within the next month or two. It will be very picky. We'll be very picky on who's going to be going through the training course. It's going to be elders only, and I feel very passionate about that. Not that there's strong Christians that are in their 30s, but I'm looking for people like Mary and Paul Pearson, you know, that have been in situations for a long time, have been mentors. Um, they help walk, walk yeah, the younger exactly. people through. So it's, it's going to be, and that's not everything we have for next year. That's just what I feel like sharing with you guys because. Do you, you want me to say anything on the fam group thing or no? Yeah, I thought I just did. I meant like describing like what, what all it was and everything. Okay. Go ahead. Oh. So, yeah, we're looking at hopefully starting it up um, January at 1st. January 1st at the beginning of the year. I'm working on all the materials now. Uh, basically, they're going to be small, um, small community groups kind of things where it's like five to ten people max. Um, as far as the meeting thing, like Kelsey and Brooke, they're doing in-app only since we have uh, the group chat kind of thing on the app. Uh, it's up to the discretion of the leader, though. They can do in app. They can do in person if they want to meet up at you know their house or I don't know but outside everybody, somewhere. Everybody or and I have in the policy. Everybody needs to agree on where to meet. Schedule yeah. changes. Um, you know, just because you're a leader doesn't mean you can say, "Hey, this week I'm meeting." You know, there people are signing up based on maybe the leader, but like. Brooks doing Tuesday, so I decided to do a different night to give people, yeah. you know. So if you switch the days up and someone in the groups, they're really going to miss out. You know? I would say sign up based on. We'll talk to the leaders when we go through everything and hash it out. Um, but I, I would say try to stick to a consistent schedule and a meeting thing. Like mm -hmm. you know, majority of the time we're meeting Mondays at six on Zoom, or we're meeting Mondays at six at such and such house, whatever. Keep it consistent to that. And then if when you're signing up for the group, um, sign up based on what day you want to meet and, you know, how you would yeah, like to meet. Because the material I is going up. to be the same. Yeah. 
um, you know, the way she delivers it and I deliver it is it's going to be the same. It's basically going to have the key. It's going to have a three part system. It's going to have the um, key take key takeaways. Basically, it'll be the group is going to reflect on the most impactful points from Sunday's sermon. Then there will be a list of discussion questions, which are going to be the same across the board. So just because you get in, you know, uh, this group with this leader doesn't mean you're going to be missing out with this one. It's going to be completely the same. The reason why we have multiple groups is because we're only allowing up to 10 people. And we're doing that because... Like in the young adults group, there's almost, there's like 30 people. Nobody talks because nobody really knows each other and everyone's kind of embarrassed. Yeah. So it's mainly you, me, and Tanya just, yeah, yeah, okay. So, and then after the discussion questions, then it's the practical application. So this is basically guiding you guys in discussion, applying the sermon's principle to your daily life. So... It's going to be the same across the board. The only difference will be the people that are in the chat and what they share and what they say will obviously be the only difference. Now, uh, what about the leaders? Do you want to announce that? Announce what? Like leaders? Oh, yeah. I mean, I put that on Facebook. If people are interested in being a leader, um, we're going to be very picky. With that, well, like we've talked about last week, we've had a lot of people be excited about stuff and then... Um, drop out, you know, and so we have a leadership application and Brooke said today that it looked really intimidating, but (laughs) it's, it's, it's a serious thing. If you're, you know, it's a, it's a commitment. Mm -hmm. You're, you're signing in every, obviously if you're sick, that's why we'll be managing all of them. If you're sick, you can, Jared will step in and cover your group for the week, you know, um, but we have a leadership application, and um, it's just it's you know it's not like a pedestal thing. It's just it's it's gonna we're gonna be picky. Yeah. Um, and uh, that you I know you you said you put it on Facebook. So if you're interested, just email in potentially leading one of the fam groups uh, for the sermon discussions. Um, the email is on our Facebook, um, and. If you're one of the people that's interested in leading it, but you think uh, you, you wouldn't know how or something like that, like it's when gonna, I brought it's it up, it's not going to be brainless, but it's it's I'm sending it's very easy. everybody yeah. the info on Monday mornings. Um, we hand you, uh, we we send out the curriculum basically, and you just yeah. follow it along. So it's not like you have to prepare anything or anything like that. All you really need to do is watch the sermon. Uh, and when you get the curriculum, it will have the link at the top. I put it there for each individual sermon that you'll watch. And then, like I said, like she said, it's literally just walking down the list. So if you're interested in doing something like that, you know, just hop on the Facebook. Hop on the Facebook. Hop on the Facebook, guys. And, and email uh, us. No. And then uh, we'll get the application. And like she said, we, we are being picky about it because it is a commitment thing. And we're we're looking for those people that are fostering, um, you know, those little communities. In my policy too, sorry, and then we'll move on to because we're spending like 90 hours on this. Um, In my policy too, I stress that we're going to be watching very closely. It doesn't turn into a click. So your group of 10 or 5 or 4 or, you know, whatever, under 10, it is not going to be tolerated if that group becomes this click. Now, a good click where you guys are hanging out, doing stuff, that's one thing. But if it turns into a situation to where we're excluding church members on Sunday, it just you can tell when stuff starts to go. Mm-hmm. Like it's south. not going to turn into Cora's rebellion. Yeah, that was from the from. We uh, hate Cora. I don't know about hate's a strong word. <laughs> um, I have no idea what you're talking about. In the uh, numbers and everything. No, the guys Amanda, that- it's literally like forever until the sermon is done. January through no, like forever and ever. She's just asking about a time. Ta- what do you mean? And time I was frame. being sassy. No time frame. So it, they're just ongoing. Uh, the groups are basically designed to not end. It's just a discussion group to think of it like a like a never ending Bible study kind of thing. It's like the women's it just, Tuesday Bible yeah, study. Like the women's Tuesday Bible study. You get the sermon material. You go through it. It's also designed where if you don't want to meet every week and you just want to do every other week, it's up to the discretion of the leader. 
Uh, and that's something we'll discuss as we go through, you know, whoever with the applications and everything. It, it's, well, how's it, that going to work? They just go through whichever discussion. Oh, either, but it's up to them. Oh. It's either, it's, there, there's the curriculum and they'll go through whatever. Um, but we'll hash that out with uh, the people that, you know, get picked, I guess, for lack of a oh, better way. To, I don't know how else to say that without sounding weird, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, so this was week eight. I can't even read those. They're so small. Um, <clears throat> of contend, snatched from the fire, Jude 22 to 23. If you have a favorite quote, drop it in the chat. Tell us, uh, you know, what you enjoyed most about the sermon. Um, Aw, <laughs> Bill. Thanks, Bill. Was, oh, uh, <laughs> I didn't see it. That's cool. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we obviously, you know, we've been walking through Jude. We're in the last, uh, this this week, and... The next week is um, the final, the final uh, sermon of the series, and uh, so I'm excited about that. It's been a lot of fun going through uh, and taking our time and everything and learning. So I, it's been great for me, um, just kind of slowing down and going through the stuff. You You're right? not feeling this, are you? Huh? No, I was. I was thinking. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I'm going to use some of the discussion, discussion, discussion. questions oh, again. Oh, we got so many good discussions. What? I can't. Has there been thought about... Mitch, I can't understand what you're saying. There we go. Speaking in tongues over there All in the right, chat. So, since we were talking about this week, showing mercy to those who doubt and everything... Let's uh, let's jump into this question. So, how could we balance showing ow, showing mercy to those who doubt, while still I should have just brought it up on my iPad while still contending, what nothing for the faith. <laughs> and what 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 does this look like? Did I miss something? No. What does it look like practically? So I'll ask you. What do you think um, with the with the showing mercy to people who doubt? Like how 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 would you? You don't so... remember the conversation today at eleven thirty when I'm freaking out. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm saying like so like with your <laughs> friends when laughing. your friends have a question about like the Bible or something like that. How would you? How do you handle? How do you navigate? Why are you doing this to me? I'm just having a conversation <laughs> with you. Like how do you? Why do? You, what, how do you navigate? And how do you? The people that are listening. How do you navigate? Showing mercy to the people that have questions or maybe that don't understand the Bible. So, well, do, do you want me to go? Because mm -hmm. I have an example. So, Sunday, right. uh, immediately after the sermon, I had um, someone come up. I don't want to say who. Not that it, They had a question based off of their friends who... Um, their friends were... <laughs> they asked me... They said they didn't pray in the name of Jesus... Then I can't even pronounce the name. It looked like if you just slammed your face across the keyboard, it, like I don't know what I've never seen or anything like that. Um, so asked me what that was, and I had no idea because I've never seen it, never heard of it. Mm -hmm. And then they were talking about their friends, and their friends are of the group that believes uh, the rapture has already happened, and mm -hmm. we are living in the tribulation. No. Um, and you hear that, Brooke? I've heard some we stuff on it. that. They think the world <laughs> is fully ending in 2030, which the Bible again says that no man knows the date or the hour. Uh, when Jesus comes back, or when the world ends, so there's no reason to fear something like that because nobody knows uh, the rapture has not already happened yet. Um, and then the other side, they were showing me. They clicked on this place's website, and it, which is crazy because it's all about you know. Uh, I was we've been going with contending for the faith and the false prophets and the false Christians. I guess this church, for lack of a better term, has multiple campuses and groups that they do but as soon as you looked at the thing on google and it shows you like uh the list of like web pages you know when you google like a church's name and it says like mm. whatever mm. one of them was uh god the mother so obviously yeah god the mother that's a that's a, a thing that some people believe uh, which is obviously oh. completely twisted and false uh god has mentioned numerous times throughout the bible as being a male 
they call him he, him. Uh, <laughs> I sound like I'm using pronouns, but that's not what I'm doing. Uh, and that when you get done with huh? that. I'll and he's called God the Father. So there is no God the Mother. Uh, he is a, He is the Father. He's God the Father. There's God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. All three in the Trinity are all referred to as male. Uh, and this is just one of the things that you have to look out for with like false prophets and, and the false Christian things that try to lead people astray. Is They always start with something that makes uh, a little bit of sense and has, you know, like a little bit of truth sprinkled in. So... I didn't have a clue really on a bunch of the stuff they were showing me and asking me, <laughs> but I gave them an example because I, I was following this one um, page on Facebook a while ago, uh, I think it was like 2021 20, or something like that, and some of the stuff the guy posted was interesting and it was diving behind like behind the scenes things that happens like with stuff that we find out now, like with stuff that the government and media and all that has lied about. So they, they rope you in with that. And then I noticed the trend of this guy. When he started talking about the Bible, he started weaseling his way into uh, denying the Trinity. And then it fell into the whole, you know, Jesus, his name wasn't Jesus because the letter J. And went into just all kinds of just crazy mess. Obviously, I ended up just completely blocking that page and getting out of there. But that's just, I mean, for... Somebody that's not as built up in their faith or doesn't know or doesn't research things, it's easy for it's easier for them to fall into that kind of trap. And what were you going to say? So this is completely. Well, you said pronouns, so I had I had, I had screenshotted screenshot. Um, oh, uh, this on the way here, and I thought it was really interesting. And it's actually kind of how you just said the twisting thing. Mm -hmm. Is it Oppenheimer? Oppenheimer? Oppenheimer. Yep. Emma Dumont comes out, this is the article, comes out as trans, masculine, non-binary. I don't know what that means. Reveals they have a new name. 32-year-old actor, not an actress anymore because now she's trans, lucent, non-binary or whatever, <laughs> has announced they will go by a different name but will retain their birth name for work purposes. The 32-year-old will now go by they, them instead of she, her, blah, blah, blah. And then this is what it said, announcing their, to their friends and family they will now call them by a new name. The next sentence literally says, there is a lot of pressure to try and conform to the norms of society. Semicolon. We're supposed to act a certain way, but what if that means lying to yourself and to your nearest and dearest of exactly who you are? Which is what You've they're doing. You've got to be true to yourself. This is an article just explaining that this chick is pretending to be a guy and now we're giving advice. You've got to be true to yourself, even if that means swimming upstream, breaking the mold. That's breaking the mold, all right. There will be people that won't like it, but as long as you live your life as you believe is true to yourself, does it really matter? How does that make you feel? First off, <laughs> the trans community is not swimming upstream. I would have to say not being trans is swimming upstream nowadays. <laughs> um, women staying women and men staying men, I would say, would be breaking the mold. And people don't like that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I read that on the way here. And that was just, you're a reporter literally just reporting that this chick wants to be a opiate, translucent, whatever it said. What did it say? I don't know. There was so many different trans masculine, non binary. I don't even know what that means. And then it was two sentences about this chick and then it went straight into manipulation. Mental, mental gymnastics straight trying to justify into everything. Manipulating. 
All I see with, and, and obviously I've a thousand percent numerous times on this it is made her, made her a hero. Literally oh, yeah, made but for doing nothing. I mean, it, it, it's like when uh, Bruce Jenner put on a wig and won Woman of the Year over thousands of other women that should have deserved that title for whatever you know accomplishments they had done or whatever you know. But we don't do that because apparently now the bravest thing is for a man to deny himself and uh, act like a woman. That's not brave. Uh, to me, that's complete cowardice. You are denying like that. It said to be true, true to yourself. Well, all of well, those you know people What's... that are doing that, they're not being true to themselves. They're listening to a demonic spirit. Well, the, the key thing to take away is if people argue, well, why the they, them? And... Um, what's funny is if you think about it is their answer is, oh, well, that's because I'm genderless. And if you really, truly, they, them doesn't mean genderless, it would mean genderless. So if you were to call yourself by a pronoun that meant genderless, why would they choose they, them if it's not demonic? They would just say, oh, yeah, I'm going by it. Because that would be, would it not? That would be truly genderless. They point. them is is just a group of people that's not, that has nothing to do with gender. Actually, that's a more interesting point when you when you put it that way. That but in the they, Bible, they them is demonic, demonic. So it's like, come on, Which is, it's literally in your face because you would just be say it. It is a genderless thing, and it's singular. Mm -hmm. So that's another way to connect that it is demonic because it would, like that, that was the perfect way to put it. Are you it, proud that. of me? I just thought of that. It's very good. Well Thank done. Thank you. Uh, with, with they, them. <laughs> that's all them, you guys get tonight out of me. <laughs> well, think about it. With, with they, them, it, it implies also, a group. Aren't you wearing that Sunday? I am. Oh. So you're booked. Uh, they, them implying uh, Best a group. Ever. And so we know that, I mean, Amanda said it and we've said it, we've discussed it here before. All the demons in the Bible, they're genderless beings. They refer to themselves as they and them. Mm -hmm. uh, and they operate in groups. Uh, you but know, the not main all the time argument singlet, is, oh, but, yeah. we don't want to be a gender. Okay. All, all it is is... But that's not what they, them means. It's just If a, that's truly what you're trying to go for. Well, it's, it's a, obviously, it's a demonic agenda that's getting pushed to deny people of their identity in Christ. Uh, as long as Satan and his minions can get you to believe anything other than any part of the Bible that leads you to the truth, they're leading you into falsehood, they're leading you straight into hell. So mm -hmm. when they get you to deny the most simplest things like that, like, oh, you're not a male, you're not a female. Now they're getting you to just deny the way that God created you and intended you to be. He doesn't make mistakes. Now, that's not to say, I think where a lot of people get twisted up on this kind of thing is they think that uh, heterosexual, straight people don't struggle with like a, a, a gay tendency or a gay thought or anything like that. It's not, um, how do I want to put this? It's not the thinking or the temptation that's a sin. It's when you act on it. So you can be straight and struggle with homosexuality or identity issues like that, but that doesn't make it a sin. It makes it a sin when you jump into it and start acting on those things. So that's what, you know, that's basically... The short version of, you know, denying yourself, denying your, your flesh and taking mm -hmm. up your cross, you know, that that's, I saw a great comment on something earlier that, uh, that a lot of the uh, homosexual LGBTQ camp, they think that when we go and talk to them, we're trying to win them into heterosexuality and win them into being straight. That's not the point. The point is to introduce you to Jesus, who is your Lord and Savior, who will transform you. We're not trying to make you straight. We're trying to make you holy. We're trying to get you to realize okay, that. trying to make you straight, too. Well, it's not, you know what I'm saying? Well, obviously straight, yes, because God intended male and female, and then to be male with female or female with male, not yes. one with the other. But it's not, the main point is not just about making you straight. It's about getting you to recognize that you need a Lord and Savior because you're a sinner. So, all I see, and it's 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 really sad to see, and there's so much more than just the trans community, because now it's just, it's like everything under the sun 
you know, the, you've got the group that, like, furries, and they want to identify as an animal. I mean, you got people now that's just identifying as whatever they want. Someone on the St. Augustine news page, I think this word was, and probably people saw it, is they said they were eating downtown and a family with their kids that were not older than 10 years old were running around like cats, and they put their food on the floor or something, and they were licking out of the cups of water, and I'm like... See, I just, I, I can't, my brain doesn't wrap around how you as a parent don't crack down on that and be like, no, you're not a, an animal. You're not a cat. You're going to sit at this table and be a civilized human being. But instead, like now people are afraid to honor their God-given role as being a parent and parenting. And when your kid wants to act like a cat or a dog, you putting your foot down and saying, Puppy. no, that's not what you're doing. We don't do that in here. I mean, it's just now it's... People aren't being parents anymore. They're just letting kids do whatever they want. And then you, that's how you get kids doing that. That's how you get kids standing up in restaurants. I mean, you see the reels like on Facebook and stuff where the kids are like cussing people out at mm -hmm. four or five years old, dropping the F-bomb and everything. It's like, dude, and, and people are just laughing at it. Like, oh, that's hilarious. Like, how is that funny that your child is acting like a grown adult? Like, how's that going to look? in 10, 15 years when they're a grown adult, like how much worse is that behavior going to end up being? But yeah, nobody's, do I didn't even see that. I didn't realize that that, that was the thing. But, I didn't make that up. That was somewhere. Well, obviously. <laughs> but okay, next. that's just the thing with it. So it, it's just a big identity crisis. Um, that's a good one. How do we discern when to show compassion mixed with fear? Versus when to fully engage with someone struggling spiritually. How do we discern when to show compassion mixed with fear versus when to fully engage with someone struggling? That confused me. Spiritually. Did you make these questions? Because good heavens. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I can't. I don't know if it's just because the pressure of being live or just the lights are really bright, but it's like I feel mentally handicapped when you read these out loud. Like, pick what? One. Pick one. They're um, all hard. <laughs> well, you gotta, what do you mean? Designed to stretch your brain. It's stretching, so, all right. <laughs> well, showing, so my point, like, showing compassion mixed with fear. So the point of that was... AKA freaked out. Okay, here's an example. Break it down. When Brooke and I are freaking out on the couch saying that we are going to miss the rapture because do we actually believe in God? Are we certain that we're doing the right thing? Are we actually Christians? Like, what if we're not? What if we're reading through the Bible? I'm like, oh my goodness, what if we're just pretending? Like that. That would be an example. What would you do to show compassion? Well, that was completely different than what this passage was referring to. <laughs> uh, no, that's Not when I had really. that entire conversation with y'all. The, 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 the <laughs> so every time Brooke and Rodney come over, guys, it ends up, if we hang out long enough, it ends up being Rodney just sitting there calm as a cucumber, just chilling, and Brooke and I grilling Jared with all of our questions. And yeah. Yeah, it gets it gets pretty intense. We you guys do, just we try you pretty hard. Overthink and overanalyze yeah. everything under the sun, and uh, that's that's just an attack on your mind. And you are a Christian. You are reading the Bible and doing that, all of okay? that stuff that you're supposed to be doing, and not that you're doing it just because you're supposed to be doing it, but because you're genuinely seeking the truth and seeking after a relationship with yes, Jesus. Yes, yes, we know. And we're all just, of that. So I was we had an example that. on people that would be <laughs> well mixed with fear. Well, this is referring to, like I was saying on Sunday, this was referring to. Uh, so you had. Um, showing mercy to those who doubt and then snatching the others from the fire and then you had uh, showing mercy mixed with fear which was compassion mixed with fear so this was referring to people that were because the, the, the entire piece of the scripture mm -hmm. was uh, showing mercy mixed with fear hating even the garment stained by flesh so yeah. this was talking about people that their sin was uh, so strong so thick they were so corrupt that Jude was describing. When, is it, when them. does it become dangerous for you to get involved? Exactly. Yeah. So, and that was the point I think that I had made during the message was because it was the first thing that popped in my head was like the the drug addicts that they get clean, they Brooke. get clean, and then 
you know, after a short amount of time, like they go to jail for a couple of weeks or months or mm-hmm. whatever, rehab, and then they go meet with their friends and the people that they used to hang out with, and they think they can stay out of it, but the reality is they're just not far enough removed from the situation that they were in for years and years and years. Well, the reality of it, too, that they fall back into it. is they will say, and only you know, but if you're sitting there, you just got out of rehab, and you're saying, okay, I, you know, I can handle seeing my friends, but, I mean, can you really? Because when you're sitting there at 11 o'clock at night and you've had, let's say, you know, you came out of, you know, an alcoholic rehab, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous or a, a, you know, that type of thing. If you're sitting there and you've had a really, I guess this would go for drugs too, I don't know. But you're sitting there and it's six o'clock at night, you had a really bad day at work, you just got out of rehab, you got a new job, you've been doing really, really good. It's six o'clock and you're like, oh, you know, and the even the thought popping up, to this is my personal opinion, your thought popping up in your head, um, you know, I can just have one drink. It's really been a really bad week. The minute that thought even comes, I would say, no, you should be hanging out with those friends because yeah. you can't even handle yourself on your own. Yeah, that's a really good point. So to me, I would just be like, and even if you never have those thoughts after a while, you should, I mean, it's, 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 it's a serious thing because just who you're around. But I would say if you cannot handle your thoughts, what's wrong? You can't handle your thoughts. I can't sit still, so I'm just, I'm down here. They can't see my legs. Don't judge me. You can't handle your thoughts. Yeah, you can't handle your thoughts by yourself. How are you going to handle other people speaking it verbally over you? And Yeah, and uh, peer pressure, mm-hmm. all that kind of thing. No, that's a, that's a really good point. Um, that's I mean, that's basically the sum of what I was saying with just the people that they want to go hang out with the people or they want to try to bring them out of it. I mean, you see it like, uh, you see it with new Christians. They get super on fire for God. And that's awesome. Like having that, that, you know, that initial fire and passion, but they try to, and it's not that it's a bad thing, but they try to just run headfirst into the fire without being trained. So think of it like, uh, like the military, not going through basic training and then trying to go deploy with someone that's in the special forces or like the you know the rangers or whatever. Like you, you're not going to be able to handle that just because you haven't gone Don't through the steps. Army now? To, tra- to, 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 to you haven't gone through the stuff to train you up there and get you to that point. So it's like you, your heart's in the right place, but you still need to you still need to you know get some maturity under your belt and, and, and things like that. And that's not saying you can't like talk to people, but I think that was a good point. Like the compassion mixed with fear is not hanging out with those people, but you know, still praying for them, you know, not just completely cutting them off. That's why I said, you know, Sunday, like you, you put it in God's hands and you, you pray for these people. Cause you know, some people, yeah, you can, you can plant the seed. Some people, you know, you can, you can talk to them and you can snatch them out of it just by talking to them. And some people, man, they're they're so far gone that the only the only way they're getting saved, obviously, well, obviously, the only way anybody's saved is from is through God. But um, what was I trying to say? You being sober for a year, um, good job, Jason. You being sober for a year, even if you don't talk to them for the full year, and they find out through word of mouth or whatever, even that is enough to plant a seed. They'll they'll say, well, how did you, how did you do that, you know? So yeah. you don't really have to talk to them. You can just keep going on your path, and you're sober for a year. You're sober for two years, and trust me, they will remember how you used to be because people. Well, you see it. Hate letting that go. Yeah, they. You see it, and I've had conversations with him, and you know the people like, oh. I think he's mentioned it before, like, oh, you know, what are you up to now? Well, you know, I'm going to church, I'm a Christian. Oh, so you don't have fun. Well, no, that's not what I said. Mm-hmm. I just said I'm, I'm walking a different path now. And that's, that's the unfortunate side for a lot of people is you, you come out of that initial, uh, you have that initial coming no, out of that lifestyle. Him, he teased him about, oh, you're going to, um, uh-oh. Oh, you're going to uh, how them Christian girls or something like that. Like, yeah. he got real nasty about the women, too, and it's just... Like, yeah, it's, but I mean, that's, and that's, 
I don't want to say that's them being demon possessed, but in a way that's them being used by the dark, the dark side uh, to get into your head and try to, you know, get you to slip up and compromise in some kind of way. Like, you know, because it can be tempting for somebody that used to do whatever and like, no, man, like I can still have fun. And then you end up back full blown in, in addiction or alcoholism or something like that. So that's the whole thing with mixed with fear is being fearful of being corrupted and knowing your limits, knowing that like, hey, I shouldn't hang out with these people. I shouldn't, uh, for some people maybe, you know, hey, I, I just need to cut them off and pray for them. Like, I can't talk know, to them. If you don't know your limits, don't go near... Err on the side of caution. Anything, because a lot of these, you know, a lot of times addiction really starts from not knowing your limits and you go overboard and you go overboard again, you go overboard again, you go overboard again, and then you're addicted. So, you know, it's fine if you don't know your limits. Don't go near. I was trying to think of something like really cool and smart that went with that, but I don't have anything. But you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. If you don't know your limits, don't even... Don't try. Don't go, Just near, on the side don't of go near the water. I don't and, know. and pray for them. I mean, I think, I think a lot of people need to hear that more is like... In, you know, like with contending for the faith, like yes, standing up for the faith, that doesn't mean you know to, you, you need to go to seminary for several years and get a, a bachelor's degree or a master's of divinity yes, or does. anything like that. <laughs> God never called anybody qualified. He taught, I mean, think about the disciples. He taught them after he called them. He taught them all the things. And then, I mean, like Sunday, you know, we saw even after the resurrection, there was some still worshiped a level him. of training. There's still, it's, it's ongoing. It's I know, that, but I'm saying like, he didn't just meet these guys and he was like, okie dokie, off you pop. Yeah. Like there's still a level of training. Yeah. And he, so he like basically, well, it was a little bit of an internship there for a while. And then he went and then they were, you know, pushed forward. So yeah. not to be with confused with you saying just like anybody can pop up and be a preacher. It's like there's a level of training when you're influencing a large number of people. There's training and there is obviously uh, the, the call. It's, uh, I fully, there's, there's nobody that should be on, on a pulpit, it, behind the pulpit, whatever. There's nobody that should be... Uh, no, I got to figure out how to word this. Because everybody is called to preach the word, but to be a pastor is not something that everyone is called to do. So we're all supposed to be, you know, Matthew 28, 19, Mark 16, 15, 15. We're supposed to all be, uh, and even in second, I think it's second Timothy two, four, uh, preach the word, preach the word. We're told to preach the word, to proclaim the I gospel, say, like, but I, being a pastor is, it's, it's a calling. So I would just thought about this. So the big thing, and a lot of people could argue, they would say, all right, um, you know, everybody's supposed to preach, like you just said. What, you know, what, 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 why would you be called to preach on a stage versus just a normal, you know? And I would say that, and this is, again, my opinion, so y'all don't get all mad at me and get all fluffy and stuff. <laughs> um, and I don't know. But I would have to say there... In my opinion, maybe there's a possibility that he calls particular people to be preachers based off of their personality. So, and, I, and I'm just like, I'm saying that because what I've learned so far is you have to be capable, you have to be capable and be fine with working 24-7, like... 24-7. Um, yeah, we really don't <laughs> have, stop. we really have not, we really don't take days off. Um, the phone is always going off. You have to be capable to completely separate. You have to be able to struggle with what your family's going through and deal with what 500 other families are going through because they're coming to you. And so you actually have to mentally handle the load of 500 different families' personal struggles because, like the other day, you got Facebook message at 11.45, and a yes, boundaries, absolutely. But you still, even if you don't respond, you still see that message. Still just seeing the message is a mental load on your brain. 
So for a couple or just a single pastor that's going through this ministry, you know, it is, it has been the most mentally challenging thing and you have to be able to have that personality to be able to almost have split personalities at some point and be able to keep your family over here and then handle this in a way that you reflect Jesus at all times and support that hurting individual or hurting individuals and family and lead them in the right direction so they do not go astray. So maybe I'm speaking crazy talk, but there's got to be something that has to do with true pastors that are truly called to do this. There has to be something with the personality that has a factor. Yeah. Or I'd else say the everybody would be called to be, you know what I mean? Because he does say everybody, what happened? Oh. Sorry. Um, that's just my, like, that was just a thought that came into my head. Like, maybe that has a lot to do with it when people are like, well, are maybe our great speakers and have no stage fright. Why is it the people, some people that have stage fright are called to do it? Doesn't seem like it'd be a very good fit. Well, maybe it's because it's going to be a very good fit in the long term because the personality, the only thing that they have to work through is just maybe anxiety and stage fright. And on the other side of things, <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> no, actually, that, uh, maybe on the other that. side of things, um, you know, 90% of them was literally built and born to be a preacher because of their personality. And that little 10% of them has that um, negative side of anxiety or, you know, like the demonic side of being possessed by anxiety and the spirit of, Tanya will know the answer, the spirit of whatever it's called. She's told me a million and a half times, but I can't remember <laughs> what it is. Don't kill me. Um, um, well, I, well, so it, I think, yeah, I think personality is. I don't know. It's just a there that is a I factor <laughs> uh, that is a, and and I'm not gonna profess to believe that I know all of the factors on why God picks who He picks. That that don't God's the only one that's gonna know why He chooses to pick who He picks. You know, I wasn't saying that I knew. I was just no, I didn't mean it <laughs> like that. Um, but Jeez, like you, you're talking about, you know, like for some people, yeah, they have, um, that personality to just be a great public speaker. And some people are, are terrified of it and they have to get over the fear of it. Um, there's actually TD Jakes when he, the first time he preached, he had to use a stand because the, he was shaking so bad that he had to put the microphone in a stand so people wouldn't see him shaking because he was terrified. Now, obviously, we've you seen were the man. You on your first one, huh? remember? I'm sure I was. Um, I remember because I was making fun of you in my head. That's great. Wow. <laughs> So <laughs> lovely, very demure. Oh, whatever. <laughs> uh, but no, like, so yeah, that, I mean, that, that's a factor. And then you think of, you know, um, another good one you said, like, some people are born and bred to do it. I think of, that makes me think of... Born and <clears throat> bred. Ezekiel. That sounds so... Where ugh. God literally tells Ezekiel, like, the, Ezekiel was made with a, a forehead like flint. God literally told him, like, as, as stubborn as the nation is in rejecting my word that you bring, mm -hmm. you're going to be just as stubborn in still bringing the word. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's something I have, you know, mm -hmm. uh, where it's just no matter how much people push back or reject the word of God. Oh, I thought you were going somewhere else you with that. Still, you still bring it. And yeah, being stubborn. Now, obviously, stubbornness bleeds into your entire life, and it's not just with preaching. Um, but that actually, that rolled into another question that I was looking at, which was, in what ways might our own doubts or struggles actually help us relate to and reach others who are questioning their faith? One day, Brooke and I will stand up here and tell everyone that they will indeed make the rapture, that they do believe in Jesus. <laughs> I was That's just trying great. to tie it you in. do it Sunday? No. Oh. <laughs> Why not? No. Um, <laughs> no, I, and I think that's great. That's like um, Bean. Kelly was saying that she shares Don't her story. share her that's, real name. It's a secret. It's just the first name. She's good. She shares her story. That's the only thing she feels confident in. Obviously, everybody, you and I, we've gone through different paths of life, different 
things, different walks. Everyone watching has gone through different things. We all have our own personal testimony. And, you know, like the, the old saying goes, for some people, you are the only Bible that they're going to read, per se. So that's why we're supposed to live holy lives. That's why we're supposed to live set apart lives. That way when people look at us, they see the light of Christ. They don't, um, they don't go, you know, maybe when they look at you, they should see Jesus. They should see that you're living differently than how they live, than how the world lives. So that's just the reality of the, the testimony, you know, and you can get upset and wonder why you went through what you went through, why this happened to you, why that happened to you. Or you can realize, like, this is meant for a purpose and God brought me through it. I didn't enjoy it at the time, mm-hmm. but because it, it's never fun to get through, but it does build your faith in the long run. And when you can look back and see how God brought you through it and delivered you from it, you can use that as a very powerful testimony in order to reach someone else because you can relate with them. You can share your struggles. You can share your doubts. You can share your fears of, you know, hey, I used to wonder if I was going to make the rapture, but then I had a conversation with my husband and, you know, now I'm I'm good and I know I'm going to make the rapture. That kind of thing. It's just, we've all got our own personal story that that you can share with someone because everything we go through, everything we've done is for a reason. Mm. Um, and I think that's just, that's the easiest, that's almost the easiest way to share the gospel. No, no, bro, knowing... you'll be up here, brother. I said, me and you <laughs> will be telling people about the rap. Me and you, like together, sharing a microphone. What are some ways that we can uh, let our light shine in a world that so often hates Christian values. You just said it. It's different. It's not what are, like, it's what's a way thing. that you can shine your light to someone that, so like the friends so that you have So when they're being a butthead, beliefs. you can still be mercy and compassion. When someone cuts you off, you don't flick them off or rear end them. Pray for them. Yeah. That's Sorry. good. I get road rage, but anyways. I think everyone in this town gets road rage. No, but I mean, yeah, it's it's just how you handle situations. When when somebody is coming at you sideways, you know, you've got basically two options. Where's the question again? Which one? The one you just said. This one. Practical ways to let yeah. your life shine. I mean, that, shine. that would say that would be practical. It would just be basically... You know, how you handle situations, people's reactions, um, practical ways, uh, you know, the kindness, social media, like you said, you know, sharing, sharing um, things that you read, sharing, you know, like I've been reading that book that Amanda forced me to read and it's, it's actually a really good book, but I refuse to go on the Zoom calls because I can't let her win completely. And, you know, (laughs) whatever, Um, you know, sharing little snippets from the book. And that's just little, little ways just to be a little sneaky that people, it's not like, you know, people see Bible verse sometimes and they're like, ugh, and they keep scrolling. But if it's a little, you know, is Amanda's picture with her and a black man? What is that? Mitch. Wow, I have no idea. That was very <laughs> Mitch, random. you got tan. <laughs> um, you know, sharing little little things like that. Um, it, that wouldn't be immediately scrolled past. You know, I feel like that would be that would be a practical way. Um, anything you'd like to say? I think. Uh, <laughs> well, I think social media is. A big one. And I've harped on, you know, how social media is a platform that's that we all have, that everyone has. You don't have to have a stage for it. It's You've got a friends list, whatever. And the reality is people are watching. Even if they're not responding, if they're not yeah. commenting on it, they are still watching. Um, especially when you're sharing the, everything. I was going to say the Jesus stuff, but that sounds like so the light. Jesus but stuff. when you're sharing, you know that Jesus when you're stuff. sharing God, when you're sharing the gospel, when you're, when you're posting Bible verses, like, yeah, 
you don't get as many comments on that as you do with sharing something else or oh anything like gosh. that. Oh my gosh! So for yeah. everything. remember when I had Instagram? Mm-hmm. And we were, I was super into fitness when we met. Like it would be two hours a day, um, and hashtag miss that body. But you know, it'd be two hours a day, and I would post like fitness photos. Um, Super uber embarrassing looking back on that now, but you know, 60, 70, over 100, you know, it would be like a solid 70% of my friends' comments, like fire emoji, you go girl, you know, and people inboxing me, make me a meal plan, you know, uh, what do you do for your shoulders? I don't know, I'm giving them that voice, but you remember that? Mm-hmm. And, um, Guys, friend requesting, you know, all oh, you the time. still get that. I mean, no, I don't. Yes, you do. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, now I post Bible verses. It's pretty much like my core friends here at church that like it. You know, that's it. And nobody's inboxing me. Hey, how do I get saved? There's just no nothing at all. But they are still watching. Yeah. And you but see it by it's, when. It's such a massive difference. It just... is. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, and it's insane that we get, society gets <laughs> and, uh, so excited for uh, anything under the sun. Yeah. But we, we don't get excited for, and it, it's, it's really just sad just watching yeah. it, watching the decline. And, Especially in the South where everybody confesses belief in God and will go to church on Sundays but live like hell the entire rest of the week. And, and I'm not like judging anybody or casting shame on them or whatever, but that's just the reality of the situation. We know how it is. I mean, we, we've done it ourselves. Where it's, you go to church on Sunday and do whatever we you want else on We shouldn't be able to sit. Like the in the meeting yesterday, your dad said something that hit me really hard. He was like... Mother's Day, Easter, and Christmas are your big days. And I didn't say it out loud because I think your mom already looked like she was really mad at me, so I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> no, but um, my first thought was like, what do you mean big days? What do you mean big days? This isn't a, this, it isn't a Disney crowd calendar. Like, That's... why does the church have big days? What do you mean? That's when. But I know, I know. But I'm just saying, I know what it was. But in my thought, I was like, "Dang, that's sad." Like, what? Depressing. And you, you. What was funny is like you're so used to church life because you were raised in it. I mean, I was too, but totally different. Like you were a pastor's son, and I was not. But so you're kind of used to that. But you went on without a beat, and you were like, "Oh, Mother's Day's a big day." Like, dang, wow, I'd, I wouldn't have thought, you know, that type of thing. Like, you missed it because it's such a cultural norm in the church. And I was just like, "Big day!" Like, I could see if we put Kona snow truck out front, it'd be like a big day. But it's like, why? Every weekend. It's also really sad that be. Mother's Day is a big day because. All moms, Christian moms, want to do is have their family with them come to church, and they that's get that's there. why it's it's a big day. Yep. Like, and then Christmas Jesus died, Easter. Jesus born, and your mama making you go is all you're coming to church for. Obligation, obligation, and to get her off your back. Yeah, it's essentially that's viewed, but it's more. and that's what it's it's incredibly uh, depressing. Um, Kelly, well, I've never had. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it, I mean, it, it, it is really just... It's, it's overrated. And it's not Kelly, that... It's super overrated. It's not that I, like, glossed over it because I've grown up in it. It's just one of those things that, well, I mean... I wasn't hating this, on you. No, I'm just, just saying, like... like that was the reality situation. You it's didn't just miss you're, the you're used to, to the it. People. It is. It's, it's the cultural thing where it's just you realize, like... Yeah. I mean, and, and you see it... No, honestly, week in and week out, uh, just a, a, a normal, like, church should be filled to capacity everywhere, not just here, but, mm-hmm. like, everywhere, every weekend. But the reality is I that... people are sick, like, people are Well, they're are sick, sick, but there's stuff, still but... enough people to fill a yeah. building, and yeah. then you have the other side where people look for any 
excuse to not go. Is it raining? I'm not going, even if it's a drizzle. Is it too foggy? I'm not going to make it. The road's not safe. Uh, I want to go fishing this morning. Oh, there's a there's a football game at 2.30 in the afternoon. There's a baseball game at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Well, you know, that's there, so we're just not going to go to... Anything under the sun, you woke up a little late, which is astounding to me that we'll come to work every day 15 minutes early or on time, but when it comes to church, we come halfway through the worship set, which is... Yeah, Gabby. Worship is, is, <laughs> worship is more important than, than the preaching. It's the most important part of the thing. We're, we're, we're called to worship God first and foremost mm. uh, before we're supposed to mm. preach the word of God. And that preaching is just another form of worship. So, you know, it's, it's just sad to, to witness, but it's, it's always been a thing. And I, I, I hope to at least change that culture in this church someday uh, with coming early and coming hungry. But, uh, you I know, love Kona Ice. It's, um, I'm trying to get Kona Ice for like the truck? anniversary thing. That'd but be cool. I don't know if we'd have to pay the money that... I don't know how that that'll probably works. get. I'll probably get in trouble for that. We'll find out. So I can't do that. Find out. Um, Kona Ice, though. One more question, then we can wrap it up. Why? Because we've... Fine, I don't want to talk to you anymore anyway. That's good. Uh, which this is Whoa. kind of also a thing, but how might viewing our lives as a walking, living ministry change the way... Uh, my ears are starting to ring in. Change the way we approach our daily interactions and decisions. <clears throat> and I think I spoke, obviously, since in the question list... Uh, a little bit on this on Sunday, and man, just the same thing. This is where more believers, more Christians need to need to dive into is realizing that people are watching us more than they're listening to us, per se. I think that, that takes me back to the first sermon I preached, which was in the youth, um, was on being the, what, you were, it was so long ago. It was so heavy for them. I was dying. It was. Yeah, I'm not a youth pastor. No, My brain it was work that so. Way. <laughs> it I could probably do better funny, now, knowing but, how to like shift some things around and. and but bless whatever. their hearts, they did so good for you. But um, I, I, I spoke on. I believe I called it the shining. Maybe I'll preach it again here someday. Uh, but being a light, and I'm going to make it a series. The. <laughs> The thing with the the speed of light is fast is faster is faster than the speed of sound. So one of the points I made with with that being the difference is that people see before they hear. Mm -hmm. So they're watching everything we do before they ever want to open their ears. Look at you guys. To us, huh? That thing I was giving you a compliment. I didn't hear what you said. Um before they open their ears to us. So a lot of people like that, like for someone like Jason or someone else that comes out of something and you have those old friends that are knocking you for being a Christian now and they're mocking you and making fun of you and, and saying this and that and that. For one, yeah, they could probably try and trying to make you crack or, you know, they're, they're testing you. Mm -hmm. Like we're called to test the spirits and see if they're the Holy Spirit or a false spirit. The same kind of thing where they're almost testing you to see what your fruit is. And so, you know, a, a plant, a tree, it takes years for those things to bear fruit. It takes Christians time to bear fruit. It takes time to mature in your faith and get to that point. But for a time. lot of people, as soon as they hear about it, they just want to knock you down. Time out. While we do another um, question, I want to have them ask you a question. So y'all think of a really good question you've been uh, wanting to ask him. Well, it takes a minute and a half to catch up, so okay. we'll give it that. It's okay. Um, Start typing fast. <laughs> so, uh, so yes, they, they watch for what you're doing, how you're living, and that, I'll take it back to social media. That's the importance of... Oh, my gosh, but I do have to say, holy cow, I just thought of this. <laughs> All right. I have to have a... Okay, so... Like, <laughs> I was looking at how pretty you look. So, yeah. Your hair looks good. So, um... You can't do nothing to make that Okay, listen, look stop it. So, you keep... When you keep harping on, you know, uh, people are watching how you live. They're watching how you live. Um, 
my goodness, don't become, don't become that fake cover Christian. No, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Is that your sermon? No. Oh, don't become that fake, fake little hypocrite because, um, if you get so wrapped up and they're watching, they're watching, they're watching what I'm doing, they're watching what I'm doing, like that's great to have in the back of your mind, but I'll tell you right now, don't make that your main focus. Make your main focus actually chasing what you're supposed to chase and the rest will come just fine. But if you sit there and you focus on um, image where they're watching what I'm doing, they're watching what I'm doing, you're going to continue to still do stuff in the shadows and that will come to light and I have heard people say things in front of other people trying to look good, and I know them, and I'm like, okay, all right, buddy, buddy. Like, that. <laughs> not, and I'm thinking in my head, everyone that's listening, how many people know yeah. you're full of crap right now? Yeah. And how many people know you're full of crap, and you are completely messing them up right now? Yep. You're causing especially someone if they to respect stumble. you. Yeah. Especially if they respect you. So do not this pro, this wasn't a big revelation. Everybody actually probably already figured that out. But to don't me that yourself. that came up because just don't focus on everybody's watching you as much as you know, you're sitting here saying, you know, people they watch you, they watch you, they watch you. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. But the main focus is you need to what? I was gonna say if you're so focused on Watching who's watching you, you're, you're not watching down. Jesus. Yeah. So yeah. So that's just my main point was just focus on what you're what focus on actually chasing what you're supposed to chase, and everything else will come puttering along the way it's supposed to with people watching you. In that instance, you know what I'm saying? Like you always say, walk your walk. I yell at you all the time. I'm like, don't you better not say anything up there that you have never done or never mean or I an do. exact opposite of what you do because I will call you out <laughs> from the sound. Well, you will. No, you don't. <laughs> I try to make sure. I try to be as transparent as possible. I, there's no sense in trying to act. I, I do not believe I am a perfect person at. Not at all. At all. Thank nope. you. Nope. Uh, I, I don't, and I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to act like it. I'm not going to walk around like it. So I, pastors need to get back to admitting their brokenness. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, man, at least one person, when you're doing stuff in the darkness and you're trying to look like something perfect, I can guarantee you, because that's just how it is. When you open your mouth, one person will know, at least one person will know you're full of crap. And then, <clears throat> and then you're, um, like I said, you're, 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 you're making yourself a stumbling block for someone else because mm -hmm. they're going to be like, well, if they're lying about this, what else? Mm -hmm. What else? And then, and then they could fall. If there's someone already struggling with their faith and, and with doubts, they can go all the way. The enemy can get a foothold with that and take them completely down the rabbit hole with, well, they're lying about this. Maybe they're lying about the whole Jesus thing mm -hmm. and they're just using God or for just, their own gain. That's Christians for you. Yeah, that too. I mean, that's... That's that's the shame. I mean, you just you you gotta you just gotta be real. God never called. You gotta be real cool. You know, he he makes us perfect. We're blameless in His sight. Um, oh. Kelly just did, so that I'll get was... to that one in a second. Okay. But yeah, I mean, that's just the way to sum it up is don't don't worry about. I mean, Galatians uh, one ten. Don't don't worry about the opinion of man and, and quit looking around at people to see what they think of you. It doesn't matter what they think of you. Mm -hmm. It matters that your focus is on Jesus, you're chasing Jesus, because exactly that. I mean, I'm seek first the kingdom of God and the rest will be added to you. I mean, as you, as you walk in your faith and you chase God and pursue him, the rest gets added to you and then his will, your, your will ends up lining up with his will because you start getting more kingdom minded and you start chasing after what God wants uh, mm -hmm. for your life and for others' lives instead of what you want in life. So be real. Don't be a fake Christian. The cover Christian. I like Don't that. Be a that was loser. good. Don't be a cover Christian. Don't be a butthead. So Bean asked <laughs> over on the Facebook. What? It's lay Facebook. What would you recommend for me to say when others have a question I don't know the answer to? Make it up. 
No, <laughs> that's terrible advice. No, um, first off, be humble enough to admit that you don't have the answer. We talked about this last week. Yeah. And I will say that this is completely not, this is not, what is there a day star right now? I don't know what day star is. This is, this is, so when you're in the hospital, you're working as a nurse, state comes in and inspects you. Um, and when they get done with their inspection, like we had a couple times where state, the, the evaluators were really cool and they told us specifically, because for some reason, like I always tried to hide in rooms and no. I was like a super good nurse on those days because I was like always in the patient's rooms because they couldn't come in the patient's rooms without going with you. So I was like, I would have my rooms all right there and I'd be like, bloop, 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 and go right into the next room. <laughs> <laughs> or I'd be, they couldn't go in the med room. And so I'd be in the med room, just like getting everyone's meds for them, all like, like all their supplies already for them. Oh, thank you. <laughs> State's here. Can't see you doing that at all. Anyways, <laughs> but they, we had a couple really cool, so sorry. We have a, a couple really cool evaluators and they broke it down and every single time. So in nursing school, they told us this and every state evaluator with any nursing job I had, always, always they said, hey, because my nursing instructors told me when you don't know the answer to the question, because they try to give you this little book to study before the state comes, like the hospital will make it up and they try to do that. But um, it's just not going to, not everything's going to be in there that they're going to ask. They're trying to trip you up. They're trying to see how good you are, you know, so... Uh, every single time when they say, you know, what's the circumference of the moon? And you're like, you don't know the answer to that question. You say, you know what, um, sir or ma'am, I don't know the answer to that right now, but I will find out for you. May I be excused to find your answer? And you literally go and you find the answer. They'll move on to someone else, but they will remember they asked you that question. Now I've watched nurses say that and then dip out and keep doing their patients, thinking, oh, they'll forget. They did. A, they got a mark, and they said, I remembered that you left me hanging, and you never found my answer. They also marked against the people that made it up. Now, sometimes people made it up, and it was sounded really good, yeah, that's and it was kind idea. of the right answer, but... You know, people say, "Oh, say whatever, what you could, you whatever you say, just say it with confidence." And sometimes it gets passed. Like, no, they they knew, they knew. It's their job. This is their job. They know when you're absolutely just full of it. Like, this is their job. They said the only time they ever respected a nurse was when the nurse said, "I don't know that." They didn't respect him when they knew the answer. That just gave the hospital points. They respected the nurse. When the nurse said, I don't know the answer to that right now, the nurse went and found the answer yeah. and could quote with, like, had brought the information, whether it was a printout from the hospital, like the policy, what's your policy on wearing two different shoes? You know, whatever, I just made it up. And they brought them the printout. They went to the computer, found the answer, printed it out, and said, yes, this is section, you know, 57 A, B, 1, 2, 3, and it says you must wear the same shoes at all times. You know, so they brought it to them. They said that is the most, most the, you know what I'm trying to say. That is when they respected yeah. the nurse the most. So to me, hey, you know what? I actually have a Bible app on my phone. You should download it and let's look this up. You know what I mean? Something like that. You could get them to download the Bible app. You could find the answer in the Bible app. All you need to do if they're like, I'm struggling with lust, and you're like, I don't know how to go in the Bible app. You just literally type in lust, and you can choose Bible verses, Bible plans, something else. I don't what? remember what it is. Like all the things you can choose on a certain topic that you search oh, in the there's, Bible app. Yeah, there's the devotionals, the Bible plan. Well, that's so the you can thing. just type in like anger issues. Um, yeah, you can search and under can their search devotionals anything. anything. That would get their curiosity like, oh, you know, 
for the love of everything, don't pull up Google. Like, go to the Bible, either the Bible app or the actual Bible to find the answer. Please don't yeah, Google in the their back, question. Oh, mine's all the way over there. Uh, you know, in the back, there's usually, like, the um, concordance and things like that that can give you... You can have, it'll have like themes or anything like that if you have a good study Bible. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's step one is if you don't have the answer, just admit like, hey, I don't know this. Let Either let me get back to you or let's go find it together. Mm-hmm. Uh, another good one is gotquestions.org. It is a uh, like a Bible website. There is over 9,000 articles. You, Tanya. Huh? Tanya's like, I find the state people. I'm like, hey guys, come uh, on in. You would be my favorite coworker because I did have a coworker like that that would just steal the show and we could all hide. She was the OG. She was the best. Yeah. Because she would just take the heat. I think of uh, like something like that. Like so, I mean, I was not a nurse, but I worked in utilities. Uh, if someone asked you a question, you didn't know the answer to it. You couldn't fake it. I mean, well, you could try, but you're going to get called out real quick, and they're going to know. The other side of it is uh, if you try to fake your way into doing something, at least in my line of work, you yeah. would end up dying because you would get into something that would either cross well, phase or go to ground, and you're dead. Someone, so. so, yeah, neither one is an enjoyable outcome. Everybody is dying. Um, but, yeah, that's, uh, I would just, you know, just. You have to be like that. People respect transparency more uh-huh. than falsehood. So it goes back to what we were talking about a minute ago with just trying to Well, you don't know what they already something. know. And, well, exactly. And they could just so be, they testing could be testing you. And now you, you look like a, a big ding-dong. Yep, a big ding-dong. And oh, my God. Move on from that. <clears throat> so gotquestions.org. I actually use this website all the time in my studies. Um they he gets answer, the questions and puts them in AI. Answer a lot of questions. Yeah, that's where I get my son. Yeah, you know. Uh, <laughs> and um, you're entertainment preacher, dude. Yeah, I'm. I'm working on my jersey, changing my last name. Jared Furtick. Yeah, I've got it tattooed across my back. I covered up my back tattoo, Bro. and um, all that's of that wild. fun stuff. So yeah, it's it's a great great website if you guys haven't heard of it, um, and they answer a lot of questions. It's great for Bible study, um, and you know the the big thing is <coughs> just be transparent, be open, and be honest. Because um, if you're not, not only are you lying to someone, which could mess up their eternal soul because it could lead them astray, you're also lying, which is a sin, and you're lying in front of God about God. And Ooh. his matters. So you definitely won't make the rapture. Then. <laughs> don't do <laughs> any kidding. of those things. Just just be open about it. And it's not it, it's not a hard thing. I'm, well, it, it shouldn't be a hard thing. But it is for a lot of people. They it they is, want they to act. Know, I've got like they've I've got it all together before because I didn't want to look stupid and you know because I'm insecure. So you could if you have a lot of pressure um, on you to basically know the Bible and people ask you questions about it, you know? Uh, well, I mean, that's like me, like with preaching. I, I, I still struggle with feeling like I don't know enough or, uh, you know, I mean, there's me, people like, out here that have... Huh? <laughs> me, I'm like, just don't ask me any questions. No. It's, uh, you know, and it's, it's, uh, the good thing is when somebody asks you something you don't know, that's an opportunity to dive deeper in your relationship with Christ and search it out. I mean, I've been saying it a lot recently in uh, Proverbs. It's, it's the glory of God to conceal a thing, and it's the glory of kings to search it out. That's why Jesus spoke in parables after a certain period of time. If you remember, I spoke on it during uh, the the revival night. The, the thing with the parables was to conceal and encode biblical teaching so that the enemy couldn't get it and twist it out. That's why for a lot of people, if they don't have the Holy Spirit in them and they don't know God, they don't understand the Bible. And that's how you get atheists that say, you know, oh, they've read it cover to cover. Well, you didn't search it for the truth. You searched it for your own whatever reasons, and nothing was revealed to you. That's why you don't actually understand it. And that's the beautiful thing that I love about the Bible is no matter how long you've studied it for, you're always going to get something new out of it because it's the living word of God. It, it, It doesn't change, but you change, and he reveals different things to you. So it's just, it's just about, um, 
it's just about being transparent and, and everything like that. Like, I, you know, I, I struggle with my own insecurities and there's, there's people out here that I, it's, it's a weird paradox to preach to people that have studied the Bible more than I've been alive. Yeah. Um, which is always going to be the case. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to quote every verse or whatever, but I get to bring what God gives me and, you know, if nothing, if it doesn't feed the congregation, if at least it, feed, it fed me and it feeds me if I go back and watch it again. So yeah, I, I just, you know, I love it. I, I'm, I'm enjoying, not that everything in life is peachy and perfect all the time, but I do enjoy that I literally get to study and learn the word of God for funsies. For my life. Uh, it's, Sorry, I, I just jumped in and I was kind of half listening else. to you. <laughs> You're fine. You good? Yeah. My eyeballs hurt because you made these lights really bright. That's the lowest I can get with our cameras until we are blessed with new equipment to further the gospel of the Lord. Hint, hint, wink, wink. wink. Yeah. So, Sunday... No other questions? I was thinking Tawny was going to have this, like, oh, Angela. I thought uh, Tawny was going to have this, like, crazy super in-depth, oh. crazy question that I wouldn't even be able to read. I'm disappointed. Disappointed, man. It's fine, I guess. Next week. Is there any other questions you would like to say? No. Um... Well, I was reading the one that says, how can we equip ourselves to, to see and resist the dangers of false prophets? But I've answered that numerous times It's with preaching that there's so much biblical illiteracy that we need to get in the word of God. Um, Another one, while I'm dropping stuff, I mean, we've got the Got Questions website. On YouTube, there's a guy, Nate... Furtick. (laughs) I don't remember his last name. Nate something. The channel on YouTube is Wise Disciple, um, and I've been watching him recently a bit more, <clears throat> and he does a lot of breakdown videos on, like, the woke theology of, we're going to wrap this up because you're done. I'm, I'm good. No, that's I'm, like the fifth time you've yawned. I'm so sorry. I'm boring. I'm not. Oh. <laughs> he, he does a lot of videos that break down. Uh, like the woke theology of TikTok and, and all that fun stuff that people twist with the false gospel and all that good, all that jazz. Uh, and he breaks it down in showing you how to speak the truth against it to know God's word. It's a great tool if you start watching his videos. And I haven't seen everything, so I'm not going to say, you know, like yeah, I would agree with everything he says because there's nobody that's perfect. But. All the stuff I've watched is super biblically sound. He used to be a pastor, but now he just makes these videos, as he puts it, teaching you to be the disciple that God has called you to be. Uh, And he does a lot of phenomenal stuff with just helping you know more about the word, uh, apologetics type of things, which is just defending the gospel, which goes with our Contend series. So that's Wise Disciple on YouTube. Um, Very cool. So with, with, with Sunday, we're wrapping up Jude with... Verses 24 and 25, um, which is what a lot of people would say is uh, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, as some people would say, uh, doxology in the Bible. Um, and I, I, I'm excited. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be really great and a great close to the series. I'm going to spend a lot of time on just uh, praise and, and, and praising Jesus um, for everything he's done for us, that he continues to do for us. So if nothing else, come to church ready to be loud and vocal and giving God the glory that he deserves for all that he has brought you through, still bringing you through, and will eventually bring you through when you get to the next uh, mountain that you're facing. Um, And with that, we will wrap this up tonight. We, We thank you guys for joining us. Uh, we love spending these these Wednesday nights with you and growing in faith together. Uh, you know, keep keep on the lookout. Check out our Facebook for the um, the information on the new fam groups and the sermon discussions and everything else that we've got going on. We've got a, a lot of stuff that's popping up. If you don't have our app yet, go and get it. The easiest way to get it is going onto our website familychurch.social. If you scroll down, there's literally a big bar that gives you the link to click 
to download the app for whether you have an iPhone or an Android or Google, whatever you have, it'll take you there. Get our app. We have groups. I actually gave the app a little bit of a facelift. So instead of the more tab, which was on the bottom right of the app, there's a connect button. If you click that, there's a bunch of different uh, blocks that you can click. There's a prayer request button so you can write your prayer request through our app. Uh, there's actually, I think some people were having trouble finding the groups, which is the little like chat icon in the top. But if you go to the bottom right now, there's a groups button, which will take you to the groups. Uh, and you can find your different groups and just get connected. Uh, continue to you know share everything on, on social media and, and dropping comments on all that stuff. Uh, not just the live stuff, but the archive stuff. Okay, so it helps it get yeah, out. Yeah, they got it. I'm just going through the thing. Um, Minor prophets are the minor prophets because the books are shorter in the Bible, and the major prophets actually were more in detail and longer books of the Bible. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Sunday, come early. Uh, we start at 10, come at, you know, 9.45, whatever. Get here early. Invite someone, invite someone, invite someone. Uh, and, you know, with giving, continue with your giving. Obviously, um, it goes a long way, especially with the land that we've purchased. The mortgage and, and on the land. Else. Yeah, the, with the mortgage on the land, with everything we've got going on. We're, you know, we're trying to upgrade our equipment and everything like that. So we thank you for partnering with us in this ministry to further the gospel. It's not about putting clothes on our backs in, you know, a new car or anything like that. Trust me, if you look at the paint on my truck, it's falling apart. Is my steering wheel sideways? So it, it ain't about us. We're yeah, literally we just trying to make bit. Jesus, huh? We need to get that. Fixed. I know. I need to get it fixed. Um, but wear yeah, your yeah, ugly sweater Sunday. Just, yes. Uh, uh, hey, I hope that message spoke to you today. I want to say thank you to everybody who is involved at Family Church and those who help support this ministry. If you would like to get more involved, you can click the link in the description or head to our website, familychurch.social. We would love to connect with you, and you can find all of our social media platforms on our website. Also, if this message spoke to you in any way today and you liked it, consider sharing it on your social media in any way that you would like so that we can help reach those far from God and return them to the arms of the Father. We want to see God work through you. We love you. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.